Welcome to The Prince Eats. Here's a quick recipe video for lamb ragu prepared in simple and easy fashion. Ingredients are in the description. If after watching this video you found it enjoyable and helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll share some tips and tricks to help you get through this in a breeze and have it ready and prepared for your meals during the week. This dish yields impressive net cooking hours and plenty of opportunities for leftovers during the week. To start off, of course the star of this show is lamb. Here I have approximately two and a quarter pounds of semi-boneless lamb shank. Luckily I found this pre-packaged at my local grocery store and to be quite honest, I didn't expect this pretty cut. As you can see, it's beautiful and has pretty decent marbling for a leg of lamb, but we do have to trim the fat on this a little bit. For this recipe, we're gonna get a really hard sear on the presentation side of this lamb. What that means is we have to remove quite a bit of the fat from the top of the lamb. In order to get a great sear on any protein, you really have to make sure that the flesh of the meat is touching the bottom of the pan. When there's a lot of fat on your protein, the fat will sear, and that's about it. You really won't get any searing on the flesh of the meat. And quite honestly, what you'll get is a lot of fat rendering that will show in the presence of excess oil and excess fat in the pan. And technically at that point, you'll be frying your protein. And that's not what we want to do here. So we want to go ahead and clean this up as much as possible just so that we can maintain some even contact with the flesh of this lamb in the bottom of the pan. If you execute this part well, you should be able to get a pretty nice fond on the bottom of your pan. Because there is some simmering involved in this recipe, that fond is really going to help to achieve a much deeper, richer flavor that certainly will be a highlight of the dish once complete. Whenever you're trimming fat from meat, I have a few tips. Always work with a sharp knife. If you have to sharpen your knife or hone your knife before this execution, go ahead and do so. The second tip is to not rush this process. For the sake of this video, I'm exercising lengthy, controlled trimming. Remember, trim as much of the fat and as little of the flesh as possible. And when you're done, the end result should look similar to this. There's still some fat left on the lamb and that's to be expected, but for the most part, most of it has been removed. The next step in this cooking process is to heavily season your lamb shank. For this recipe, the only seasoning required at this point is fresh cracked pepper and plenty salt. Try to cover as much of the lamb with as much black pepper as you can on both sides. Salt heavily. I say salt heavily because this dish is also going to require a little bit of salt. So if you can get most of the salt on this lamb and then that salt transfers into the pot when you sear, that's probably going to be one less pinch of salt that you have to add to this dish. Put the lamb to the side and grab your veggies. For this recipe, the lineup is simple. Red pepper and yellow onion. Grab some that are fresh and large in size. Always go for red pepper or any pepper in general that's very bright. A good indicator of freshness is firm and bright. For this recipe, you'll need to dice these vegetables. I recommend using a sharp knife. A sharp knife will reduce slipping, rubbing, and accidental damage to your hands. Here's another pro tip. Put a plastic bag over to the side. You can use that for scraps and then later for compost. Check out this simple beginner's technique for cutting red pepper. Cut off the top and the bottom of the red pepper. Then you can insert your knife and run it along the inside of the red pepper, making sure not to cut any of the flesh. Once done dicing the red pepper, place it into a bowl and put it over to the side. If you won't be using it immediately, you can cover it with some plastic wrap and place it in the refrigerator. The next thing you'll need to do is cut your onion. I try to salvage as much of this onion as possible. You might see others throwing away quite a bit of their onion, but I try to salvage as much of it as possible. I typically cut the ends of the onion and use as much of the centerpiece as possible. Feel free to dice the onion as you see fit. I typically encourage people to be as intuitive as possible when it comes to working in the kitchen. And when you're done dicing your onion, place it into a clean bowl and put it over to the side. If you won't be using it immediately, just like the red pepper, you can cover it with plastic wrap and place it in the refrigerator. For the onion, I recommend using it as soon as possible so that it doesn't absorb any of the bad odors that might be lingering in your refrigerator. When you're ready to cook, grab your pot and place it over high heat. Here I'm using a traditional Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is bottom heavy, retains heat well, and is really going to help us to get a great crust on this lamb. The salt that you used on a lamb might generate a little bit of moisture at the top of the lamb. If that's the case, lightly pat it with a paper towel. 
We want the lamb to be as dry as possible before we sear. Once the pan is hot, add some cooking oil to the pan. Here I'm using avocado oil. Avocado oil has a high smoke point and is great for searing. And when you're ready to go, place the lamb into the pot. Be careful not to generate any splashing. Press down on the lamb to ensure even contact with the bottom of the pan. In anticipation of a smoky situation, you might want to open up a window or a door in your kitchen. When it comes to getting a really good or really hard sear on meats, it's inevitable that there's going to be a smoky situation in your kitchen. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and open up a door or some windows. If things get a little bit uncomfortable, don't hesitate to reduce the heat. Reducing the heat just means that you're going to allow it to sear for a little while longer. The higher the heat, the quicker you'll get the sear. If you haven't done so already, reduce the heat to medium. The next step is to get some color on the bottom of this bulb of garlic. If necessary, add a little bit of oil to the pan. But you only want to sear this garlic for approximately 1-2 to two minutes at most. The next step is to dump in your onions and red pepper. Don't worry about the dark color at the bottom of the pan. The moisture from the onions and red pepper will pick up some of the bits and later on in this cooking process the red wine that you'll use will pick up the rest of the bits on the bottom of the pan. Cook these veggies for approximately 3 to 5 minutes or until they turn slightly tender. Once they turn slightly tender, create a little bit of space in the center of the pot. We're going to use the center of the pot to fry up a little bit of this tomato paste. The tomato paste will add depth of flavor on the tomato side. Cook that tomato paste in the center of the pot for approximately 2 to 3 minutes. Monitor and don't hesitate to regulate the heat under the pot. If you need to reduce the heat, go ahead and do so. Season the veggies with a couple pinches of salt. I recommend just a couple pinches of salt until the taste test later on. Next you'll add some aromatics. That is rosemary and thyme. Depending on how large your serving is, you can go up to 1.5 tablespoons for each. Stir the mix until evenly combined. This next one is optional, but I highly recommend. Add some crushed red pepper flakes. And for the traditional beefy flavor profile, you can add some paprika, cumin, and chili powder. Stir all of those ingredients together until evenly incorporated. Be sure to scrape any pieces that might be on the side of the pan. After approximately one minute, you can grab your red wine. This step is optional, however, highly recommended. The notes from the red wine will add great depth of flavor to this dish. I recommend using a dry red wine and preferably a Cabernet Sauvignon. And if you don't have that available, use any red wine that you have available. Allow most of the alcohol to cook off. That should take approximately six to eight minutes. Afterwards, you can go ahead and add the diced tomatoes. Stir until you can get an even mix. And if you haven't done so already, reduce the heat to medium. The next thing to do is to pour in some beef stock. Be careful not to create any splashes. You just want to add enough beef stock to reconstitute some moisture in this pot. Be sure to scrape the bottom and the sides of the pot. Toss in one bay leaf for good measure. Slightly submerge it below the surface of the stew. Next, take the lamb and carefully place it in the pot. Be careful not to create any splashes. Carefully pat down on it to see how deep it goes in the pot. At most, it should be slightly submerged. But if not, add a little bit of beef stock. Tap it again to submerge it slightly below the surface. Grab the garlic and tuck it face down into the stew. Bring it to a gentle simmer, cover, and place in a preheated oven at 325 to 350 for two to two and a half hours. When you bring it out of the oven, you'll have the perfect example of tender, juicy lamb. And if you prepare it enough, this should cover dinner for a few days. A classic example of net cooking hours at its finest. This dish pairs well with a variety of carbs ranging from polenta to traditional white rice, or pasta such as pappardelle or rigatoni. Whatever you choose is sure to be a hit. Visit theprinceeats.com or The Prince Eats on all social media outlets for more simple and easy meal ideas just like this one.